Talks. It's the conversation that fills the culture and not the face. I am your host, Bill, formerly known as Chloe. I have a very special guest today, a young hit maker, Top Chef. Good? You chilling? You chilling? I heard you had a pretty crazy lit night last night. Whatever. Man, crazy lit ain't even a word for it. Word? Man. I, niggas got a shit face, man. <laughs> Fuck around one boy pack, man. Shout out to BB. BB? That's my nigga. God damn, I ain't going out with you for a little minute, nigga. Okay, right, bro. Like, black out type drama. Man, damn near, bro. It's really my fault, though. It's really my fault. I got riled up, bro. With that ADHD and shit. I got riled up trying to play them games, bro. Thought I was super nigga, bro. <laughs> super nigga in the making, nigga. bro. Do not be super nigga in the making. Nah, bro. I just want to get into your background real quick. Um, from what I was told, you know, from some close people that. You were from Connecticut, but now I've come to know that you were <laughs> born in Columbia, South Carolina, and then moved to Connecticut. So tell me about that transition. Like, how is the music scene different out there? How is, like, the people, you know? Because I ain't never been to Connecticut. Like, I'm a down south nigga. Close I've been to Connecticut, Minnesota, so. Type shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, really, it's crazy. Um, being from Sumter and then up there. Um, man, music wise, um, I mean, shit, something just a country as hell. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it's really just, you know, whatever, whatever's happening around in the bigger cities, you know, ends up uh, migrating or something. Um, but in Connecticut, um, you know, I was a lot younger when I was in Connecticut uh, than when I, when I moved back uh, to Sunday. Um, so, I didn't really get a big taste of music out there, but you know, this. Pretty safe to assume it was up north, so probably whatever was popping in New York, um, you know, things of that nature was probably popping in Connecticut. But, uh, you know, grew up around a lot of Hispanics, um, you know, things of that nature, even up in Puerto Rico. So um, I didn't really get to experience a lot of a lot of black culture as much as I did Hispanic culture, but either way, though, it was far from What's the ratio of a hand? Ah, man, niggas to, niggas to everybody, niggas to everybody. Like, what's right. the ratio? I ain't even gonna lie. <laughs> Probably like one to five. Damn. I can't lie. You know, where I live, well, I lived in uh, I lived in Waterbury when I was out there. So um, I heard it you know, true. so it's it was it's it's minority heavy, but definitely in the black right. 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 So notably you are a producer, like I know you as a producer, but uh, I did a little thing and I found out that you're an artist too. <laughs> okay, okay. So, which one would you like prefer? Would you rather be the top chef, the producer, or Richard Curry, the artist? Man, um, crazy man. I, 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 producing is where my heart is at. Okay. Um, you know, I did the artistry thing. Um, kind of is almost like a, like a self social experiment. Like, you know, when you around people who make music, you know, a lot of times, you know kind of gives you almost like a battery in your back to do other shit. Um, so on top of being a producer, I'm also an engineer. Um, damn near also an A&R and some other shit. Uh, okay. But it's kind of almost like a, you know, being around rappers, okay, shit. Goddamn, try to rap type shit. And found out that I was, you know, a little bit fly. So yeah. I decided to uh, drop a couple early, early shits on uh, SoundCloud. And then, um, we gonna get into that. We gonna get into that. We gonna get into that. Damn. <laughs> Yeah, so I decided to drop some stuff, man, and I ended up dropping a whole album uh, with a whole rollout and everything. Um, but yeah, my heart is definitely a producer. Okay. Yeah. So, what would you say your musical like influence would be growing up? Because when I hear your like your style of producing, it's like really like when I first heard it, I was like, "Oh, this is tricky." But I was like, "Huh, that shit got a little way to it." Like, I'm like, "Huh, okay, okay, fucking with it." And then Pat dropped the visual. If y'all haven't seen Tricky, go watch that shit. Yeah, go check that right shit out. Right now. Man. Bro, when, when I heard that shit, I was like, hold on, okay. It's a little off a little bit, but then that bitch started getting into a little rhythm. I was like, hold on, I'm yeah. fucking with this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, like, what was your musical influence growing up? Because I can't even one person I think of off the top of my head, but I'm going to let you. This shit is Um, it's crazy. I, uh, Man, musical influence is growing up. I grew up uh, really in church. Um, I grew up playing guitar in church. I've been playing guitar for like 13, 14 years. Um, and so a lot of my earlier influences um, was 
really like a lot of gospel, uh, R and B, um, and then uh, just just delving into a whole different whole different you know types of genres. Um, because my grandpa owned the only record store in Summer South Carolina. Um, it's still open? Nah, it's closed now. It's called Sound of Summer. Okay. Um, and so really just been surrounded by music like you know, my whole life, and so. Yeah, gospel, blues, R and B, um, even rock, classic rock. Like I was, I was delving into everything. I really didn't even start really tapping into like rap and hip hop until like 2016, to be honest with you. So, um, so a lot of yeah, Bobby, Bobby Jones, gospel, Fats, Bobby Walker. Jones, Temptations, Ohio players. Damn, um, I fuck with Ohio players. Yes, yeah, you bro. got the old soul, nigga. I'm telling you, bro. For sure, you said Ohio players, nigga. It's that shit. It's that shit. Yeah. So, did the music come about? Like, I know you said from your grandpa's record shop, like, that's how you came in touch with music, but, like, the type of music you listen to, it was just old, like, old, old music or gospel music because of being around your grandpa for so long, or were you trying to, like, venture into something? He was like, no, I want you to stay right here. Like, how much of the influence? Type shit. Really, um, I really didn't really. Get to like experience the record store mm -hmm. aspect of it. it. I think it closed down like her like sixties or seventies. So I really didn't even get that experience. I just know like he had it type shit. Um, but really, it was my dudes. I can't even lie. My mom. Um, you know, I'm a road trip baby. Um, so you know, my mom me and her used to drive everywhere, and you know, on the road. You know, this is back when you know, CDs and shit was popping, which is crazy to say. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, CDs and shit was popping, bro. Road trip, she would pop in, you know, Kurt Franklin, she would pop in, Destiny's Child, she would pop in, just different things. And so throughout the road, bro, I'm just hearing, hearing that. Like, and that's kind of all I knew for a little minute um, until I started to kind of go into my own lane um, and kind of figure out other different genres um, that I really like. And so, yeah, a lot of it was definitely on the road. A lot of it was definitely on the road. Can you go back to like your early memory? First piece of like production equipment you bought, what would it be? I really remember. My first piece of that that really made you want to lock in and be like, was it a computer? Like, was it a compressor? Like, what was that special thing that was like, yeah, this is gonna make you start producing? I ain't even gonna lie to you. It was garage man. Yeah. Garage man. A lot of niggas got started from the road, man. Shout out to the road, man. Shout out, yeah. Shout out to Alvin for making that hard ass. That's real, man. Listen. Don't no, put a lot of niggas on, bro. Feel me? Steve Jobs. Feel me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, garage man. For shit, so. Yeah, garage man. That's all. Yeah. So, I want to get into something else. Like, something that I didn't even know about you, but I was like, damn, this nigga really, like, you got, you got major buzz, bro. You work with Jensen A. Yeah. That's true. Crazy! How was that experience? Like just being in the studio with somebody of that stature, like did that shit. Like, I know it instantly motivated me. Like, wow, I need to go hard. Yeah. This is this is my moment. Like, yeah. Shout out, uh, shout out my cousin. You can't be going crazy, man. That's that's the guy who got me, who got me plugged in. He threw a um, he threw a uh, like a producer meetup type shit in the Met um, at the uh, at Invasion Studios. It was, uh, yeah, hell yeah. And it was, um, and, you know, it was, it was like, you know, like a producer get together, got there, was gonna have some folks, like, from pretty much all over the Carolinas and the surrounding areas push up, just cook up. Um, and, you know, I'm a, I'm a big person. I love community, especially in music. Like, I love collaboration. I love, you know, working with other people who are also fly. So, I jumped on it instantly. Yeah. Uh, drove down, um, was cooking up. Money, yeah. Shout out my nigga Cam. Shout out my nigga Cam, you going crazy. Hard producer, man. Hard producer, man. It's definitely my turn with this shit. Um, he threw a producer meetup type shit. Um, in the Met, at Invasion, Jet Studio, um, Home Space Boy Studio type shit. Uh, pulled up. Um, I was really just in there cooking up. Me, Cam, uh, Zai, HT, Danny, uh, my boy Kill J. Just whole, whole lot of fire ass niggas. Um, we was just taking turns on the laptop, um, and 
goddamn, I was cooking up some shit. I know it was a nigga in there that you ain't liking shit. I know. Oh, nah, nah, nah. Fucking shit up. Nah, that's the fucking with that. Nah, that's the crazy part. Like everybody in there fought. Like that was that was crazy part. Everybody in there fought. Just fought. Facts. Shout out to these. Shout out to these. Keep working. Yeah, but um, I was really cooking up, and at first it was just us, and, um, and then, you know, cooking up and shit, and I was on the laptop for a little minute, and I'm hearing commotion in the back, but I'm not really paying attention to it, like, I'm locked in on the laptop, like, making a beat, you feel me, and um, I can, like, feel people, like, over my shoulder, like, looking at me, or, like, looking at the screen or some shit, and I get up, and I turn around, and I see that nigga Jet shooting dice, and I was like, what the fuck? Mind you, like at this point, I've never like like Jet was really like was one of my first early inspirations to start making beats. So it was almost like seeing a goddamn unicorn or some shit. Like so I turn around and see him and I lock eyes with my cousin and he's like, yeah. Him, this and I was like, oh shit, <laughs> yeah. And then um, shout out again, shout out my boy Danny. Um, he hopped on uh, and he was pulling up some loops and. Um, Goddamn, Jet was like, shit, I'm trying to participate. Like, I want to cook up with y'all boys. You got, you got that fire shit. Then he hopped on, pulled up this hard ass, like, jungle tropical ass little bouncy baby shit. And Jet hopped on it. Goddamn, I got cooking up on it. And he got looking around the room. And he was like, he looked at me. He was like, you want to arrange this shit? I was like, hell yeah, nigga, what the fuck? We arrange that shit. So I got down, hopped on, ended up murking. Feel me? Arranged it. Yep. And also added some of my sauce on it. Okay. And got down, played that bitch back. It was hard. Saved it and everything. And yeah, I didn't get to put my tag on it. He didn't get to put his tag on it. But he got the beat though. I got the beat. So, but it was, it was just a fire side experience. Yeah, opportunity. Yes. I'm doing another door another lane for me. So. Just fire. I swear. Yeah. Shout out that boy Jesse. Shout out Jesse, man. It was one of the first people like I heard too. From side down, like, yep. really pop. Yeah, I actually do the shit for Yeah, real. and niggas, like, when they hear Jesse, they I'm like, bro. Iconic, bro, that shit later. You know that shit. So just yeah. to have that opportunity, like, I know it felt so real. Crazy. You know it yeah. felt for real, bro. Yeah. Seeing him and Deco and shit. Yeah. yeah. That shit was crazy. That's hard. That's hard. What's the process like when you in the studio? Like, when you cook it up, do you want, like, a whole lot of people in there? Would you rather be by yourself? Do you have a ritual? Like, Oh, all the lights gotta be off. Well, I gotta have this certain thing with me for me to feel secure. Like, what is it? Uh, really, my my cook up process. I ain't even gonna lie. I'm, I can cook up anywhere. Like, honestly, um, it, I, at first I was cooking up by myself, and I preferred to cook up by myself. But as I got more like confident and comfortable in like my abilities, and knowing that like you know I'm making some fast shit, like I don't really mind being in a room full of like. 20, 30 niggas, you feel me? Because I'm locked in on my laptop, and plus, you know, it's fine to, you know, get done, you know, be working on it and hearing niggas' reactions. Like, I love that shit, though. That shit which makes you want to goddamn make that beat even crazy. Um, I ain't gonna lie, though. I do need snacks. Oh, my God, I need something to eat. need something to drink. Snack? Let me Bruh, see. You. Studio snack. Let me oh. see. You locked in for real. Don't say no bullshit either. And that's the crazy part. I feel like I'm gonna say some bullshit. Oh. Um, Damn. Chips. I ain't even gonna lie. <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie to you. Goddamn, I need like some fruit snacks. Like some okay, okay. Some okay. Shit. So like, like life savers and shit yeah. like that. But I need something. Yeah, I need something like that. And then a calypso. Oh, I'm locked in with you, gang. Yeah. I'm locked yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Arizona, Mutual Mango. Shout okay, Mutual Mango. Mango. Yeah, Mutual Mango. Y'all stay loyal through the pandemic. Ninety nine cents. Swear to God, ninety nine cents. Ninety nine cents. This pandemic. Count on y'all. No always. <laughs> always. But yeah. That's hard, that's hard. Yeah, really. And also, you know, depending on the vibe and the mood, I might I might do something different. Um, like, you know, especially if I'm at the crib, I got my own home set up, uh, LED lights and some more shit. So, you know, I might change the color of the lights, I might cook up in the dark, I might cook up in the light, um, I might change the location you type. Just pull up, get it done. You feel me? Like it just because one thing I love about like making music and just making beats is that like different environments give me different vibes. So sometimes like I may get burnt out being upstairs. So I'll take it set up to the dining room, put it on the dining room table, cook up. Once I get burnt out there, I take it to my bedroom, got it. cook up on the, on the dressing. You feel me? Just to keep it fresh and just to always like keep new ideas flowing. Like for sure, for sure. So I really don't got no specific ritual, but I cook up damn near everywhere. Okay. Yeah. 
So, Richard Carter, we're going to jump back into the artist part. <laughs> we had talked about the producers a bit, now let's get back to the artist. So, is that like your alter ego, or that's just, that's just something you like to tap back into? Because you got two projects out under that name. Yeah. EP on Spotify, Trifecta, and then you got- Oh, oh shit. Yeah, I did my homework, nigga. <laughs> I did my homework. Okay, this shit yeah. is deeper than rap, nigga. <laughs> Trifecta, and then you got Interstellar, and that's the one you really like. Push, put out. Yeah. So, what, what was like the process for like Trifecta? Was that just a compilation album, or you just throwing that bitch out? Like, let me let me sprinkle a bitch, carry out. Like, yeah. Um, the crazy part, Trifecta was supposed to be like a series. Like, cause I was really, I really didn't plan on like yeah, I didn't, I didn't see a stopping. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was supposed to be like Trifecta one, two, three, like almost, almost on like so the week, like on some cheap people J shit. Like, I swear, mm -hmm. but. Um, Cause I really was gonna like keep rapping, but like do it like like as like some pastime type shit. So I thought like okay, man, like when I'm, when I'm making shit, and I don't really like put it all you know all the way out. I might just throw it in trifecta, you know. And, and that's what it was gonna be. So really, yeah, it was like a compilation of just like the shit I was making at the time. It was all throwaways or like um I guess you could say that throwaways or shit that I really like didn't really want to quit. I was out the push for real. It's like something I kind of made, like on the side, just to throw it out. And like, that shit. Yeah, that's crazy. That shit. I, I completely forgot about Trifecta. I, I listened to a few of them and I'm like, why are you, why are you pushing shit? But, and Estella, you just push that shit. Yeah. And they got, they got nine songs on it. And I'm going to tell you my favorite of the album, bro. Low key. Low key? Yeah. yeah. It's just, it's a vibe. Like, yeah. you can throw that bitch on, you got a shower in the shower. like. I don't know. <laughs> it's like it fits this type of key. Like, yeah. Yeah. Facts. So in those nine songs, did you originally start out with those nine songs? Or you was like, you have like twenty songs? Like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it down. Is there a significance with the nine songs? Um, to be honest with you, like I really I really wasn't even planning on dropping it out. Like literally I was just on some not even on some traffic shit, but I was just recording and I made low key first. That's crazy. That crazy. was that was the first song I made and I was like Okay, man, like, I wanna got, you know, I think I might make an album or some shit. So I made low key, and then, you know, I just kept making songs until, like, I finally had a point, like, it was like, okay, now I really can't make no more. And it was just having to be nine songs, and I made, you know, nine different vibes, you know, that I was you know, truly proud of. Like, I was truly proud of all of them. Um, and I was like, man, this shit really like an album. It sound cohesive, and it sound like, it sound like songs. So shit, oh, God, that was fun, you know? And two, it's called Interstellar, so it's like it, with those nine songs, you don't really get the same like feel from that all. song. That it's all. different. It's like really out of space. Like yeah, facts. <laughs> that's, facts. It literally fits his name wholeheartedly from top to bottom. That's crazy. That Loki was the first one. Like, yeah, Loki was the first one because I really structured it like it was really almost on some like the first like I want to say like first maybe. Four songs are almost like more underground, and then like as you get towards the bottom, more some of like the more mainstream songs. Because I really, that was really the whole point of it. Like I really didn't want any like of the songs to sound the same or like be on the same. Like you feel me? Like I, I wanted all of them to be different, have their own vibe, you know, but also keeping in you know with, with the structure that I wanted. Yeah. So yeah. Fuck. So which one is your personal favorite of the album? My favorite off the album, oh, um, probably have to be. I had the most fun making No Limit. No Limit, I had the most fun making. I was really like, I put up I'm on YouTube, put up like a. I wasn't even. It's crazy. I wasn't even looking for nothing. I was just, I was just on YouTube looking up, just like thinking of artists that like I fuck with. Um, and I looked up uh, so, like a little tech type beat and pulled up, and it was just bouncy as hell. And I was like. I fuck with this. So, got I got that song. I made that song in like probably like 15, 20 minutes. Like I got it done quick because like the vibe just hit instantly as soon as I heard the beat. I was like, okay, bet. Okay, yeah. And I was like, and I just had fun with it. I had fun. With it. I had previewed it on my spam, um, and it went crazy. Like it went crazy. Like people was like, it. people was like, like, oh yeah, drop this, drop this, drop this. I was like, okay, bet. Yeah, that's definitely like, yeah. I was like, I had who's 
probably legit too. It's like, well, let's let's do producer. Okay. And then let's do artists. Okay. Who's your favorite to collab with? Producer, who's my favorite to collab with? That's crazy because I, I have I have a good bit of labs with a good with a good bit of niggas. Um, you got like the same vibe and keep in rotation, like pretty much. Yeah, I want I want to work with these same niggas. I ain't even gonna lie, I gotta. I got a I got a slick rotation that, that I fuck with for real. Um, shout out my boy Young Crazy. Um Cobb, shout out my boy Hey Cobb. Uh shout out my boy Dox, Paradox, man. Um Damn, who else I'm allowed with, bro? My boy Cam. Um Yeah man, those really those really my main niggas that I that I fuck with, like producer wise, that I always be that with. Um, artist wise. Um, man, you gotta be the same thing. Like, I ain't even gonna lie, like, cause every every artist and every producer gives me a different vibe, like, so, like, it's just it's vibe being around that. Um, so my boy Vito, shout out my boy Three to Four Vito. Um, of course, the, the nigga who started it all, shout out my boy Pat, man. Um, my boy Zay, Northside Zay. Um, shout out my boy Kobe. It's 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 a whole list. It's a whole, it's a whole team. List. It's a whole team. Hefe, all of these, man. Shout out to all y'all, man. Shout out to all you niggas, man. man. Y'all keep working. If shit don't blow. Fact. For sure. If y'all ain't blowing by now, you it's niggas gonna blow. For sure. Yeah. So, I was gonna ask you, do you like produce all of your tracks, but I heard you say, you know, you look at like sometimes for different beats on YouTube and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. on the album? Yeah, on the album. Oh, yeah. That's the crazy part. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't produce, produce any of so, them. Why didn't you? Why didn't you want to like produce and be an artist? Did you need a break from one? Or I ain't gonna lie, low key, yeah, because yeah. I was, because I actually took a hiatus from making beats for like, like a month and a half. Like I wasn't making beats, um, and so I just it just kind of allowed me to get deeper into like uh, kind of my artist bag, I guess, and what you can say. So I really wasn't making making no no beats. I was making that out like I was straight sure, rap focus. Sure. Like I was straight artist focus. Yeah, okay. And after I would pick back up and yeah. I, I like this switch. It, it kinda gives you a balance, like you get a break from one, so you don't have to be so in your head about okay, Facts. the artist who are have to be it's so in your head about the producer. Facts. So good balance in between. So we're gonna get into the fashion now. Because Pete the Instagram, you know, you only got three pictures on that bitch, but like them three pictures is like, yeah. This ain't got motion and chrome, everything. What's the obsession with chrome? Like, like, what is it? What is it? Is it the style? Is it just like, it just the way it style, looks? Oh, the heritage, bro. I love chrome. I got on chrome. I got a chrome jacket. I ain't weak, but I got two chrome necklaces. I got one chrome bracelet. For like, yeah. IRS purposes, uh, he has no money. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So I'm, y'all bro I'm broke as hell. He broke as fuck. I'm on my last leg. <laughs> but yeah, though, on um, Chrome, I just really fell in love with it, like, on some, on some heritage shit, you know. I One thing about me, like, I'm never I'm never surface level with anything. Like, I always do my research on my history or whatever I fuck with. Um, and so, you know, just doing the history of Chrome, you know, and, you know, how they started, you know, on some you know, micro movie shit, and then they started, you know, making jewelry. It was just like, I just kind of fell in love with the aesthetic, like, just one thing that I just gravitated towards, like especially the jewelry. Like I have yeah. more chrome jewelry than I have chrome clothes. Jewelry are the shit's expensive. The earrings, the rings, the rings the shit's are expensive. Yes, the shit's expensive. Who would be the next person like you would like to see come on Botox, chop it up with me? Because I feel like we had a great fucking conversation. Like, like, what's up? It's up? just natural. So who, yeah. one of your niggas, like who would you um, like to see come chop it up with you? Who would I want to see next? I want to hear about the seat. Um. I didn't go a lot. Um, my boy Vito, artist. Pull up. And my boy Kyle. Pull up. Pull up. Man. Come see me. Pull up. Come talk to me. Oh, I promise you, I ain't, I ain't trying to rob you. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't trying to take your money, nigga. You just sit down. I'll come chop get this shit. Chop it up. Come chop it up. Oh, one more thing I wanted to ask you, bro. So. I was looking at your Instagram, like I said, you only got three pictures on that bitch, but like, yeah. all them shit is like, bro, you can tell it's mapped out. Like, Hell yeah. as far as toes and stands and shit like that, is yeah. bottling something you want to get into? Um, 
It's crazy. Um, my second oldest brother, he's a model. Uh, my boy. Shout out Trey. Um, I don't. I thought about it, but I don't know. I I don't know. I can't get behind like stripper tees. Like models gotta be like cutting your hair. You gotta be a certain weight and all this other shit. Like I, I do it like on some freelance like on some like bloody Osiris type shit. Like if I could like do it how I wanna do it, and, like not have to change nothing about me. Hell yeah, I do it but, like on a professional level. Like. I'm the same way, nigga. I pull up sweats every fucking day. Like, bro, they is not gonna like me. I'm not the model female. Yeah, like, <laughs> not cutting my dress. Bro. Yeah, just to, you know, hell no. Like, not doing that. And, uh, alright, bro, you got any socials you want, or brands you want to shout out? Go ahead and do it now. Let me know where to find you. Hell yeah. Um, follow me on IG at Top Chef 2K. Um, shout out, shout out Hef, uh, Fishing. Goddamn. Shout out every nigga that I'm working with, bro. Shout out all the niggas who are producing and making music. Um, you can do this shit. Like, I'm nowhere near star level. I'm three years in. Um, but, but if you make music, bro, if you do anything creative and artistic, bro, keep going. Keep doing that shit. Do not give up. I don't care what nobody says. Keep going. Keep doing that shit, bro. That shit going to turn into something. Really sure right, bro. The best advice anybody is giving on this fucking podcast. And on that note, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Thank you so much, Chef, for coming fucking with me, bro. Appreciate you. Spin Botox. Stay easy.